I'd like you to give a please warm welcome to not only my friend, but someone who's really changed the world, RuPaul. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> baby. Oh. In Hollywood. In Hollywood. Wow. Hello, everybody. I curtsy and I bow. Hello. Sit down. Sit down. What gorgeous chairs. It's like we're, we're coordinated here. We are what? Coordinated, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I love it. Fabulous. Well, great minds um, thinking alike, and the Emmys are this Sunday, RuPaul's are they? Drag Race. Yeah. You're kidding. I know. Yes, they're doing that again? You probably don't know about it because um, you win every single year. Well, well. You know, you know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do it for the Emmys. I do it for the children, Drew. I do it for the children. You know, they need some place to go and, and shine and shine and be gorgeous and fabulous. And they are. They're so gorgeous. They're so fabulous. And we've got some real stars up on that show. And I, that's just Ross Matthews. Oh. Um, so it's. You know, one of the things that I've really loved about your journey is that it took you a very long time to reach the level of success that you reached. And I think it's something that I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about that to people, because when it takes a long time to break through, what do you say to them to stick with it? Yeah. Well, that's the biggest challenge, is staying interested in the work. You know, you, you, you started very early. And both of us are, are lucky enough to have found success and then uh, stepped away for a minute and then had another chance to bite the apple again. And that, and that second bite is the juiciest, it's the most delicious, it's the most long lasting. And you know, not many people have that opportunity. This is such, it's a tough business. Yeah. It's a tough business. You have to earn it, you know, and, uh, and, and, and both of you. Now listen, it must be even harder for you. you. You come from a family, a legacy of very famous actors in this town. and. Uh, I can only imagine how tough for this kid to come up and say, I want to do that too, and then become the success you are today. Well, I think, you know, thank you. Um, I think probably adjacent to the way you felt, there were a lot of misconceptions that I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth or that I had doors open to me. Um, my family in 1975 and 76, when I started working, the Barrymores at that point uh, were not sort of in so much vogue of being the royal family. It had been a long time. Um, unfortunately, most of them had passed. This was not like, oh, you're a Barrymore. We'll come right this way. People were like, oh, yeah, <laughs> the Barrymore. <laughs> and when I was born into this name, it was a little washed up. It was a little old school. It was 1970s in mm -hmm. California. The glory days were long gone. And um, I felt like I really had to kind of break past that. And I wonder, in your childhood, you know, what did you feel like when you were born? Was there a predestined? Was there a support? Was there something you had to fight against or prove? What was it like when you were a kid? You know, I always knew that there was that there was something for me. My mother, when she was pregnant with me, saw a psychic, and the psychic said, "You're going to have a boy, and he's going to be famous." So I grew up with that story. So I thought, "Oh, okay. Well, um, how am I going to do that?" I didn't know I would become the most beautiful drag queen in the world. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, you know, it's no, funny, not. it's funny. But you know, I, I, I knew that it was my destiny. I didn't know how, but I was open to it. And what we all have to do is be open and be willing to hear the universe's stage direction. Your job is to find it. Clear a space for it. You have to clear a space. 
Um, now, you struggled through school. So I think it's a testament that maybe you weren't that model student, and yet you made it so far. Yeah. Well, listen, you say struggle. I say I just had no interest in it. I was interested in being an entrepreneur. What's up, Jay-Z? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. So, listen, I was just, I was sort of wasting time. I ended up dropping out in the 11th grade, and I learned everything I know from reading books and, and watching television. That's it. When I got emancipated when I was 14, the wow. court said... It is now your choice to go to school or not. And I said, oh, bye bye <laughs> I'm never going to school again. So I never did get a high school diploma. Right. So you got your GED. I, I finally got my GED, yes, when I was 19, yes. And um, I'm so incredibly excited to announce the fact that um, with Rue's support, I'm going to be pursuing my GED to finally finish my traditional education. <laughs> Three of our viewers are gonna join me on this journey. Check out this tape. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anissa Stancato. I just turned 50 and I live in Cape Coral, Florida with my husband and we have three grown children. I was really close to graduating, this close. I just needed a couple classes, but life got in the way. I ended up pregnant and married at 17, but I'm still married 32 years later to that same man. So I haven't been able to work for the past 10 years. I have some health issues, but I really feel I have more to give. I feel I have more to do. Getting my GED now will be the impetus for my second chapter in life. Hi, I'm Justin Gavin. I'm 19 years old from Brooklyn, New York. Last year, September 9th, 2020, I saved a family from a burning car, and that was one of the most life-changing things I've ever done. It motivated me to go back to school because I just want to make my mom proud, my little siblings proud. I want to be an example for them, as in, no matter what you can go through in life, you can always achieve greatness. Hi, my name is Linda San Miguel. I am from San Diego, California. I had a really tough time in high school as it was. I didn't have a very big support system. I ended up dropping out of school my junior year. Getting my GED would just mean so much, open up so many doors. Um, I really have always worried about setting a really good example for my children. I just believe that you can do this at any age. The sky's the limit from there. <laughs> And uh, we have our very own Principal Matthew. Yes, hello, everybody. Yeah. It's a role I was born to play. Seriously, you know, in all, in all seriousness, Rue, you are an A-plus human being, and I know you're going to be an A-plus student. I am going to be here every step of the way with you and our, our viewers out there. I am so proud of you. You've got this. Yeah. I love you. As your humble student, happy... <laughs> to be in your company and under your great tutelage. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you something. Because you've never let people down in this world, I can't let you guys down <laughs> either. Right. So, oh my God, I'm gonna be in study hall. And while I'm doing that, you can get your fix of RuPaul and Principal Matthews because the full season of Drag Race All Stars is currently streaming on Paramount Plus. And congratulations on all the Emmys you've won and all the nominations ahead and everything will be in touch. You're gonna help me. Oh my God, here we go. <laughs> You're Thank you, RuPaul. <laughs>